It has been 100 days since Chris last begged for money. It has been 382 days since Chris last uploaded pages to meet his paid obligations to the Sonichu comic. It has been 4,043 days since Chris last applied for a job. My name is Gibby and welcome to the Chris Chan Weekly Update. We start on Twitter with Helena, who's obviously a very prolific Chris comic fan artist. Not entirely sure what this tweet is referring to, I looked on her Twitter, couldn't find anything. She's asking what Liquid and Solid Chris should do. I believe that this is in response to finding a dead body in her comic series. And uh, she did a poll and the winning vote with 50% was do nothing, blame the trolls. Of course, Chris has to get his opinion in on here. Chris says, in my experience, when Christine Chan found a dead body or kidnapped individual, she conferred with Magichan telepathically, and, in recent years, personally used her psychic power to learn what had happened. In this case, it could be also considered that LC, Liquid Chris, might be setting her up for a trap. Fortunately, in a millisecond's time, she has all the time in the world to read Liquid Chris's mind and intentions and come up with her plan in response. In this case, however, in the alt timeline you're focusing on, Helena, Liquid Chris is genuinely concerned and has no ulterior motives. Once again, I think this is based on a fan comic uh, that, of course, Chris believes is real and happening in a far-off fictional dimension that is neither ours nor the normal Sonichu dimension. Chris is now uh, writing her comic book for her, saying that Liquid Chris uh, is not setting her up for a trap and is also not the murderer. As for the body, Seeing the murder as it had happened within that millisecond, the Chris Chan there has found the killer's identity, that's going to make the rest of the story really boring, I guess, and then look into the future for what their next target is and the reasoning and intentions are. Then she would plan and consult with Magichan and the rest of us. Oh, because remember, it's Sonichu talking, not uh, Chris Chan. A call to the police would be made. Why do they need to call the police? When he says us, he is referring to the chaotic combo. They're basically the Power Rangers. What do they need police for? A call to the police would be made for proper contact of the deceased family. Oh, it's because he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't have to go with the proper procedure of condoling a deceased person's family. They just want to punch people. And disposal of the body to the coroner and hospital. As for the next target... It depends on how the foreseen grander scheme of things what, play out and have been confirmed to play out, as well as the mentality and motives of the next target, as well as the killers, and how best to intervene and prevent the happening as needed. There are lots of complicated details to consider in this matter. What is to be for the timeline, what should not be in order to prevent catastrophe and further chaos, and so on. If anything, it plays out similar to one of Batman's cases, but Quickville is nicer, cleaner, safer, sociable, and so on, compared to Gotham, Metropolis, and New York City. So he's saying that if there was ever a murder that he needed to solve, he would just use his psychic powers to find out who the killer was in a millisecond, arrest them, and stop them from killing anybody else. Because he's God. This person says, I have friends in Royal Woods... Michigan... How is that holding up? Your friends have their own common sense and wisdom. According to my vision in looking on them, they appear to be safe as possible. Stay tuned to the news if you'd like to keep up with present events in Michigan. <laughs> if you want to know about Michigan, just, just watch the news. But of course, Chris can just see what's happening there. Chris apparently decided he wanted to delve more into the crime rates in Quickville and how it compares to Gotham. So he says, Crime rate is typically low in Quickville. Our peoples and citizens feel safe and have their freedoms to choose and whatnot, like most other cities these days. Okay, so that's interesting. I think that Chris only seems sees crime as when one citizen does something bad to another, like a mugging on the street or a murder or something like that. Because obviously, uh, we all know what goes down in Quickville. There's literally hordes of roaming evil jerk-ops and supervillains that attack it and burn down buildings all the time. So I guess he doesn't count that as crime. I wonder what word he would use to describe those events, if it's not crime. It's about as smooth and serene as planep 
Planet Neptune. Uh, this is the uh, Hyperdimension Neptunia world, I believe. Don't know how to say it. Plain? Plain Platoon? Plan Neptun? The happiness, safety, freedom, and well being of everyone are top priority with Mama, Christine Chan, Magic Chan, and the others. We all work together in good motivation and care. That is how it's always been, for the most part. I'm sorry that got misinterpreted amongst the haters in Mama's fanbase here. And then lightning bolts to end the message. Oh no, this guy's trying to this guy's trying to out everyone. You don't have a fan base. You have trolls pretending to be fans. It's like that scene in the uh, in the Truman Show where the guy pops out of the Christmas present to tell him that it's all a TV show. Truman, it's television! Yes! Except Chris is never going to listen. A lot of the stuff that's happening this week is Chris retweeting fan art and I guess talking to Helena because she's the most prolific fan art writer. I almost said writer. What's that called? Drawer? 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 Artist? Fan art artist. Illustrator. Helena asks, Also, what happened to Chris's sister? I guess this would actually be Christine's sister, the fictional Christine. Uh, and that's obviously Crystal if you've read the Sonichi comics. You know that Chris summoned her from a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Chris says, or sorry, Sonichu says, Oh, Crystalina. Oh, okay. Crystalina is Crystal's Rose Chew name. Crystalina is still alive, well and active. Y'all got to see her again in Book 12, back in action. Present day, she's working alongside the rest of us in all of the prep workings, defending Quickville, helping others, etc. She also helps out at the Bastila comms with the further paperwork and business dealings. This is Twitter. It has a character limit. Why would you write out the word etc. instead of just writing etc? Also, the short story of her origin, in case Mama had not yet shared that with y'all, yes, it's not. Trivia time. The short story is that Crystal originated from an alt dimension where she had lost her Chris Chan there, and she was the big wig there. In the end, by freaking twist of fate that she and her Magic Chan had foreseen, a portal manifested in her epic battle with Walsh, and she was flung into it and into C197 by Christine Chan's side at that moment. This is literally the origin of Spider-Gwen from the Into the Spider-Verse movie. She had taken the quick moment to recover and recount the events and what she had foreseen, and then realized where she was. Knew she was with Christine Chan and moved forward. Meanwhile, back in her old dimension, the portal backfired after Crystalina had gone through and did some massive damage to that Walsh's building. Walsh, herself, and that dimension's graduate were freed. People have legit been waiting 15 years for that backstory. Because in the Sonichu comic, Crystal literally comes out of nowhere. Chris is just losing a fight, and he's literally like, Wait a minute, I have a twin sister, and then she comes and saves him. Present day now, that dimension's Sonichu Prime ascended in its Chris Chan's place, became a practice deity with Magic Chan's help. help. Okay, so deities are bound by their dimension. The, so deity is usually just a reference to something like... I don't know what the exact definition would be, but it would be like something that is worshipped, right? It's not exactly the same as the word god, god being lowercase g god. Chris apparently is saying that deities really only have power in their own dimensions or on their own dimensional level, because in the big F fictional universe, he ascended to godhood, and in our universe, the real Chris believes he ascended to godhood. But in this parallel universe, Sonic, you did that instead which means he's less special. That would imply that Chris is less special than he's otherwise been saying. That's very interesting. I would think that he would call himself like the god of all dimensions, not just one god in one dimension. I think that dimension may be of my own subconscious, me, Sonichu Prime, feeling a mind-blown moment. Anyway, Crystalina in C-197 is still there, continuing to work hard and help us all. What's interesting is that he's not saying that Crystal is a gender-bent Chris, right? He's not saying that in that dimension, Chris was born female. He's saying that in that dimension, Chris had a twin sister and Chris also died, which is also, a, I, I think I said this last video, I was confused as to why the fictional version of Chris had to be transgender just because he was, because in the other dimension, it could just be a dimension in which he's not trans. Okay, so this is one of Helena's piece of artwork. On the left is Crystal, and on the right is female Chris, and they're doing the Dragon Ball fusion dance, and they combine, and they end up looking basically the same afterwards. And the character says, it makes sense since we are the same person. This is obviously before Chris's retcon that I was just reading you. 
Chris says, Actually, if that were the case, the fusion would have visual difference in their fur color, and the head quills would be a lot longer to match the hair length on Crystallina. The fur would be a mix of orange and blue. Not sure of the pattern offhand. How can he not be sure of the pattern? Okay, I skipped this tweet because I didn't think it would be relevant, but he literally just said he knows almost everything. Considering I'm still in Mama's brain, I've had lots of time with Magichan in the subspace and whatnot, and all of my experiences and knowledge I keep in my memory that is backed up in the cosmos. I pretty much consciously and subconsciously know more than y'all. So he's not saying he knows everything, but if he's talking to Magic Chan and if he's psychic, he should know what color a fused version of Chris and Crystal would be. So this person's antagonizing Chris, saying that in real life he's alone. And Chris says, That depends on your definition of reality. To us in C197, you are all animated cartoon series, manga, and newspaper comic strips, and paper books. Krakow. So he's saying, uh, again, he's saying us because he's Sonichu. So to the people in his dimension, we are all fictional. The per this person then says, except none of those are real. Kakao. Kachao. I guess that's how he should say it. Oh, right. Kakao is Lightning and Kachao is Lightning McQueen. I get it. And Chris says, and to us, none of you all were real either. But here we are in our own little combination of what is real and what is fiction. And you cannot beat your own paradox of hatred against your own reality, dude. So he's saying that because in the other universe we are fiction, his argument doesn't work. Obviously, the, the problem here, obviously, is that Chris doesn't accept that this person doesn't believe that what he's saying is true, right? Like, if you're, if you're an atheist arguing with a Christian or a Christian arguing with an atheist, you can only argue from the stance that the other person is correct. Otherwise, there's no point in having the argument, and Chris is just incapable of doing that. He's incapable of explaining why his point is correct without the assumption that he's right being the start of the argument. Chris decided to uh, comment on one of his old threads talking about the dimensional merge, and he's saying, In regard to determining good or bad intentions of a hero or a villain you encounter, take notes of details that have been in their backgrounds as well, and how heavy it is. Oh boy, I can think of one major example. Freaking Homelander. That's this guy? I think he's from The Boys. I haven't seen that show yet. Common sense is indeed still a valuable tool in those encounters, but you also have another tool in this dimension of yours, the chronicled media. As obvious in the show The Boys on Amazon Prime, Homelander is shown to be a selfish narcissist. Seriously though, even I know better to trust Superman over Homelander. And, indeed, Supes would take out Homelander as quickly as he was shown to do that of Goku in the death battle video. Just my two bolts on that. Well, you're wrong. Goku would beat Superman, fight me. So Chris is saying that uh, if you can't tell the difference between a hero and a villain, you should know that because in our universe you could just read their fictional accounts. Okay, Chris is now uh, once again stating that we should very soon be able to see fictional beings from the other dimension. Although he's, he's actually saying that we should be able to already. If it was not obvious, when y'all see us from the other side of the Iron Curtain, you, we can also see all of you from the C-197 side. This is more of an update on my part to this aspect of what Mama had stated, which was valid and good. Yeah, definitely do not sick the cops or authorities on us. Generally, as most original characters do with their respective Chronicler's creators, we want to talk with you all as well. So suffice to say, regardless of appearances of talking with an invisible friend, you, in reality, between both of our merging dimensions, are truly conversing, and on either end, we can hear you, and you all can hear us, especially those with an open mind, but some psychic abilities are a beneficial add-on in that communication. See, this goes back to the point I was just making. He's saying that you can actually talk to people from the other dimension, and the people from the other dimension can talk to us. But then he's saying that you shouldn't believe that someone just has an invisible friend because you actually can talk to them. But if you actually could talk to them, then you wouldn't just believe that someone has an invisible friend. Like, those two things can't happen at the same time. I can't both be have the ability to talk to a fictional character and also think that somebody else is crazy because they have the ability to talk to a fictional character. That's not how he's shown it to work. If we do not exchange eye contact with each other through the Iron Curtain, on the one hand, it is still recommended to go about your day and let us go about our own day. But if you are the friendly sort, most of us actually do appreciate the acknowledgement and interdimensional contact, even if it's a simple hello there. Also, there is no problem with breaking your own fourth walls with us from your dimension here. Go meta. We are certainly meta with and for you all as well. He still just does not know what those words mean. 
So this, this person's OC is this little dragon guy, and he's asking what will happen uh, after the merge, if he's going to be able to meet this little dragon guy, or if they're going to merge together. And Chris says, there is a 75% likelihood that you will merge with your self-counterpart, and a 25% likelihood that you two will coexist together in the same dimension after the merge. Is that the same with all creators and all creations? Is he just pulling those numbers out of nowhere? I literally do not understand. He has never said anything of the sort before. He did this very long thread a long time ago about, like, which of Stan Lee's characters he would become. Like, would he become Spider-Man? Would he become, like, the Hulk? Did he make the Hulk? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember what he said because it was a whole bunch of nonsense. Okay, so this is a couple days, this is a week after that whole long thread about Crystalina. And I think that that got him thinking about gender bent dimensions because now he has a big thread on it. He says, hey everyone, I've recently had a peek into the gender bent dimension from our dimensions. Here. Here, there is a lawnmower outside my window. Sorry, ignore that. Here, where Sonica, Tailsco, and the others exist. My counterpart goes by the name Son Son Sonica. Sonica. I'm sorry. Sonica. I, I, it must be Sonica. No, because that's what the real Sonic's name is. Sonic. Sonica. I, I, that, that, without a guide, that is not pronounceable in English. Sonica. It has to be that. But the species name still is Sonichu. Yeah. That, okay, that makes sense. Russell is Rosie's counterpart complete with the Raichu ears, typical of a male Rose Chew, and was intersex with male dominant parts post-chaotic rainbow there. Because of course Chris has retconned whether or not Rose Chew was born male or female like so many times that I guess that, that also happened to the gender bent version. Now here's something really fun for all of you fan artists out there. Magichan's counterpart. Her name is... <laughs> what are those accents? Magic Sonichu. Literally with the accents. What... <laughs> How, how am I supposed to pronounce those? English doesn't have those accents. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I literally cannot say that without a guide on how to say that. So, fan artists, with Magic's personal request, I say to you all, to your drawing tablets, paper sheets, and pen and ink. Yeah, he's asking people to draw him uh, fan art, which he does all the time, because he's too lazy to do it himself. Okay, so yeah, female female Magic Chan's name is just Magic Sonichu. Wait, if it's gender Ben, why is it... Oh, I, I, is Sonic you like their last name? I don't know, but uh, mag, Magic, Magic, I don't know. It's not a real word. Ashley Rose Chew, who's another one of the Chris's uh, fan comic writers, did a poll. What should I do? Sonic Chew fan comic, rule 34, and they got equal amounts. And then only fans got zero votes, so that's my faith in humanity still exists a little bit. All right, so this guy, the Skuma Den, he does a lot of uh, trolling art about Chris, making fun of him. So as you can see, this is uh, Liquid Chris who is smoking a blunt, and uh, <laughs> I'd like his uh, his mirror decoration to Sanchi Medallion, uh, and Magichan, and they have killed Cold Steel the Hedgehog. Helena says, I'm glad Pikachu defeated Cold Steel and saved her Magichan. You are a true chronicler. I guess that this is Helena's OC. And uh, Chris just responded with this gif of a bear spitting coffee out, because he doesn't like the blood and gore and stuff. Also on Twitter, Chris released the cover art for Sonichu 17. You might remember that he hasn't even finished writing like 14 and 15 and all those just amazing books. Uh, but here, here's the cover. So you have Magichan, Silvana, and Chris. Apparently Silvana is still part of the story despite being a creation of the idea guys to trick Chris into saying that he's a pedophile. Drawn April 1st, 2018. So it's been two years since he drew this cover and he has not made any work on it or any of the past comics for my loves oh there will be retcons i will do everything possible to help my honey and my hubby restore quickville i love christine weston chandler with all my heart and soul so yeah still nothing about what that's actually supposed to be and that is the end of the update for this week you can follow me on Twitter at G-I-B-I underscore Devin. You can join my Discord, which is linked in the description, and you can look forward to more horrifying recounting tales of Chris's life. Thank you for watching.